Hi everybody, this is Cynthia Kane, and I am the Librarian Liaison for the School of Library and Information Management. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to access our library's web page and specifically a library research database called Library and Information Science Source. This is one that you're going to be using pretty extensively in all of your SLIM classes for different types of research, finding articles, being able to generate references in APA style, and even more. So the first thing I'm going to show you will actually be several ways that you can get to the library's web page. If you want to go directly to Library Connect, which is the library's web page, you can go to emporia.edu slash library, and you will see this on the screen here. And when I click on this, this will take me to the new library's web page, which is now called Library Connect. And you may want to bookmark that on your computer or favorites uh, in whatever browser you happen to prefer. Now, if by any chance you happen to already be at the main Emporia State University website, you can get to the library's webpage Library Connect this way as well. Um, the only difficulty is that it takes more than one click. And I want to make sure you're comfortable with that as well. So we're going to scroll down to the bottom of the page. And when we get here, we're going to notice two things going on. One is over here to the right side of the screen, William Allen White Library. And there is a link here. And there's also a link if you scroll down just a little bit further on the page, down here to Libraries and Archives. This link and this link up here that's labeled William Allen White Library are actually the same. They will take you to the same page, but neither link, as you will see, is going to take you directly to the Library Connect page, which is where you do want to be in order to do, to do all of your research. This page is more of an external marketing site for the libraries and archives. But if you would scroll down on this page, click on the Library Connect that's here in the middle of the page. I wouldn't use this one over here because that's going to take you to one more site and you would need to do one more click. But if you click here on for the library, this will look familiar. And then you go to Library Connect. Now, if you happen to be in Canvas already in one or more of your Canvas courses for SLIM, you will actually see another link to the left side of your Canvas course that is labeled Library and Archives. If you were to click on that link, that would actually take you to another Canvas portal or another Canvas course that's labeled Academic Library Resources. And that's an excellent source of information for additional tutorials and additional help about the library. But for to, uh, today's tutorial, I want to focus a little bit more specifically on this, the Library Connect page. Now, if you're new to Emporia State University, this page will start to look a little bit more familiar to you. If you have already been at Emporia State, you might remember that we had another library's web page um, as of last fall that looked a little bit different. Now that old library web page had a tab on it that was called Discovery Search. The Libraries Plus Archives catalog here is still the Discovery Search. I would actually use this if I were looking for a very topic. And I wanted if our library had books, both in print and in ebook form as well, and articles that would be a very broad overview, a very broad search for a topic. That's good for discovering information, and that's why we tend to call that interface a discovery search. However, it is not a good place to start if you have a fairly targeted and focused topic for, say, a paper for one of your SLIM classes. For that type of focused research, I strongly recommend using one or more of our databases that are a little bit more subject specific. To get to those, you can either click on this icon or this link for databases. And we're going to do this now. And from this point, 
I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that you can get to library databases that are a little bit more specific for library and information science. One way you can do this is to go over here to this All Subjects tab. And this is the way that we have organized all of our databases according to rather broad disciplines or subject categories. So if I were to go to Library and Information Science, it looks like we have 13 databases that are a little bit more focused toward library and information science. And you'll see my caricature here. You could actually email me at this point, or you can use ckane one at emporia.edu. You can also call and leave me a voicemail if I don't happen to be available at 620-341-5480. Please contact me if you have any questions about doing research for your SLIM classes, and I would be more than happy to help. Now, what you're going to see here are actually quite a few databases that, again, tend to relate to library and information science. For this tutorial, this is the one we're going to focus on specifically. That's why it's labeled a best bet, Library and Information Science Source. Now, this particular database will index and also give you abstracts or summaries of a wide variety of articles from various library science journals and information science journals. In many cases, it will also give you the PDF full text. So you can actually read the PDF online, download it, you can save that to Google Drive, and I'll show you how to do that as well. If the full text isn't readily available, I'm also going to show you how you can verify if we have it in another database in our library, or if it is not available at all, how you could obtain a copy of that article through interlibrary loan. So we're going to click on Library and Information Science Source. Now, I happen to be at home, and so I'm off campus just like the majority of you probably will be as well. So I'm going to put in my ESU username and my password. And this, of course, is the same information that you use to access Canvas, your email, basically everything else relating to ESU. After I enter this, as long as I don't completely exit my session and close my browser, I could actually go from one database to another without having to re-enter my credentials. So we're going to start now with library and information science source to find some articles on a topic. Now you could start here with what is called a basic search and just start typing in a topic and you are going to get quite a few results, but I don't recommend that because they are going to probably be far too many for you to go through, and they may not be that targeted or that focused for what it is that you need. So we're going to go to an advanced search. An advanced search lets you actually limit your search so that what you get is going to be actually more appropriate for your information need. So something you're going to notice me doing right now is saying that I want to search within an abstract. Now, the reason I would want to do that is that I'm going to do a rather broad keyword search for a topic, but I only want those keywords to appear in the abstract or the summaries of those articles. The reason I'm doing that is that, remember, there's a lot of full text available in this database, a lot of full text articles. If I don't limit my search just to those keyword by, by abstract, what would happen is that those keywords would actually be pulled up anywhere in the full text of the articles in this database, even if they are not relevant to my topic or to my information needs. So sometimes when you get a lot of results, take a look and see if you've actually limited your search and if you're in an, an advanced search in the first place that will let you limit by abstract, and most databases will let you do that. So I might be interested in public libraries, Notice when I started to type here, I'm going to back space for just a second. This is actually giving me some different suggested words say that I want public library or public libraries or public library services. Let the database kind of help you generate some ideas for your keywords and it might actually come up with some ideas that you didn't um, have a chance to think about originally. Now, I'm actually interested in programming. So we're going to do programming. 
Again, I'm typing a little bit slowly so I can see what might be available. And there's programming. And because it might actually be leading me to uh, computer programming, which I'm not interested in, I'm more interested in programs that public libraries can actually put on for different audiences. I might want to say that I want to see about programming for children or adolescents or youth or child or teenager. So again, you see, I'm letting this kind of do my searching for me. If I go down here, there are some other limits that I could apply. Many times your slim faculty may ask you to limit a search for a topic that appears only in scholarly or peer reviewed journals rather than more general magazines or more general newsletters. And if you're asked to do that, you can actually limit your result down here. You can limit to full text, but I'm not going to recommend that you do this right now. Because if you only limit to full text, you may actually miss out on some articles that aren't readily available in full text in this database, but they may actually be in other databases that we have access to. And we'll be showing you that in just a second as well. I'm gonna go back up here and click on search and see what I get. That's a pretty good search right now. I have 39 references. And it looks like I'm getting some pretty current ones. And remember, I noted to you that some of them may actually link out to the full text of the article, or in this case, this one actually has the PDF. And I can just scroll down here, find something that looks interesting. This one actually looks like it could be rather interesting, shaking up story time. Let's click on the PDF full text for this one. be able to read the PDF online. Now I wanted to do this because I wanted to show you a couple of other things that you can do at this point. If you want to save this PDF to your computer, you can do this by clicking on this download key to download it to your computer. Now, just in case you're not using your own computer or if you're using a computer, uh, perhaps in a computer lab, you do have access to Google Drive through your g.emporia.edu account. So in this case, I could click on Google Drive. It would prompt me to sign into my Google Drive account, and it could be my personal one, or again, it could be the one that's through Emporia. And I could save this PDF to my Google Drive and organize it in folders. So I had some good research folders going on and I could access that at any point. Really nice thing to be able to do. The other thing I can do is Go over here and check some of these other links until I go to one over here that's called Cite. We're going to click on this. You are using the American Psychological Association, APA style, for your classes in SLIM. If you click on the Cite feature, this will actually allow you to copy and paste an APA style reference that has been generated. However, I cannot caution this enough. This reference will only be as good as the metadata or the information within the record. And this is a very good example. In this case, there was some information such as the email addresses of the authors that are actually not part of an official APA citation. So do not ever rely completely on a generated reference or a generated citation through a cite feature in a database. And a lot of people can get kind of frustrated with this. Remember that it's going to give you the elements of the citation or the reference. It is still gonna be up to you to go through and try to edit that to see if you need to actually make any corrections in appropriate APA style. And I'd be happy to answer any questions about that as well. However, it's a lot easier to copy and paste something and then edit it than to try to create that citation from scratch. Let's go back over here to the result list. And we'll look at some more results that we got from this database. So I'm pretty happy with this so far. Record number five is an excellent example of what I had just cautioned you on not wanting to limit your search just to the full text readily available through this database. This one sounds very interesting. 
and it's from a journal called Evidence-Based Library and Information Practice. However, you will notice here that there's no link to the PDF full text. I don't want to give up completely on this one, though, because there's a very good chance that this might be available in another way. So I'm going to show you two ways that I can check. We're going to go ahead and pull up the record for this. Again, this looks very promising. And I'm going to do one type of search first. Now, you'll notice that what I'm doing here is copying the title of the article. And I'm going to go back now to one of my open tabs for the main library's webpage. It's always a very good idea to keep one tab open to the main library's webpage because you don't want to lose your search in the database, but you might have to go back here. So now I'm going to click on the Libraries and Archives catalog. Because what I'm going to do now is paste the title of that article, and I'm going to see if through the discovery search, I can perhaps find the full text of that article that might be available in another database. And I'm getting something called Full Text Finder. So you notice here is the reference to the article, and let's click on Full Text Finder. And it looks like it may have found the full text of this article through something called Open Access. We're going to see if this works. And notice that it's kind of just keeping me back. It's just kind of going back and forth here. So what I'm going to do is click on Hello Guest, log in for full access, and I may have to log in again. It looks like it remembered my credentials. You might have to do that when you are off campus. So we're going to go to check for full text at the publisher site. And look what happened. This was actually a very good example of a journal that's available in open access. And open access just simply means that it's been published and it's freely available online to anybody who needs access to it. And I can click on PDF. And there it goes. And sure enough, remember, that's the one that I was looking for here in my search. And we'll go back here, and there's the article. So I'm going to go back over here to this tab, and I'm going to click back to our search. And we're going to keep going down here. Now let's say for the sake of argument that you found an article on Library and Information Science Source and you tried to search on the discovery search, but you didn't find the actual article. You weren't able to find that online. In this case, what you could do then is do an interlibrary loan request for that article. So I'm going to use this one as an example. Let's just say again, for the sake of argument, that this one was not available through that discovery search and we were not actually able to find a full text through any of our databases. In this instance, I could then click on interlibrary loan and I'll be prompted again to log in with my ESU username and password. Now, I've done interlibrary loan before, and because of that, this automatically populated my article request, and then all I would have to do is go down here, submit my request, and a PDF of that article then would be sent to my ESU email in a matter of days. If you have not done interlibrary loan before, or if you're a new student, so this is completely new to you, you would actually get a screen before this that would look like this. And you would need to fill this personal information out, including using your campus email. So use your g.emporia.edu address. 
and then you'll have access to everything that you need. So this is, again, a very quick overview of the way library and information science source is um, useful days. It's one that I highly recommend when you need to do targeted and focused research for your library and information science classes. Again, I'm Cynthia Kane, and if we go back over here, again, you can reach me at ckane1.emporia.edu or call me. I'd be happy to visit with you. If you are a distance student, I'd also be happy to set up an appointment with you through Zoom, and we can definitely uh, share our screens back and forth and figure out what it is that you need. Good luck.